phone call. So I deleted the little start of the last live and I think I accidentally deleted the video from yesterday. <laughs> so shoot. <laughs> anyway, today is August 2nd. This is the second live in the Lita Challenge and that is live every day in August. And like I said, I think I accidentally deleted the video from yesterday. I tried to check on my phone. I don't know if I can tell on my phone. So um, yeah, I'll check when I get inside. But anyway, this is video number two for August. It's August 2nd. And this video is to help determine if you're riding balanced. If you're actually sitting on both seat bones the same and something that will help you to be aware of that and to be able to work on it to develop um, the self-awareness, I guess it would be, and the core to sit balanced on each seat bone. Last time I checked with this exercise, I do sit heavier on the left side. I, I'm aware of it and feel it now when I do ride. So that's what this is gonna be. And I have my camera in a different spot than yesterday because I didn't want it to um, heat up. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit so we can see. Um, Cause I'm gonna be back here So hopefully that'll be okay for you guys. And um, yeah, does that look okay for everybody? Let me move it up just a tiny bit. Sorry about that. Um, okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do, if you have an exercise ball, um, go ahead and get yours out. <laughs> I'm going to adjust this one more time. Sorry about that. It was better the way I had it. <laughs> So if you do have an exercise ball, go ahead and get yours out. And we're just going to sit on it. You don't want your legs to be up against the ball. You want them sitting out. And you kind of want them in front of you. You don't want them out too wide. So you kind of want them in front of you. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift each leg. So you're gonna lift one up and hold it. One side will be easier than the other. So did you see that? I wanted to kind of fall that way, right? Now I'm gonna lift my right one up. So this is definitely my easier side. And it's because my weight is on the left side more so than the right side. So the weight, my weight is kind of shifted this way. So when I lift this one up, it doesn't throw me off as much. This one, and this is without like really using my core or anything. This one, when I lift it up, I want to fall. So you're not trying to stop it. You just want to lift your leg up to see which side is easier. So because I sit heavier on this side, when I lift this side up, this, no, when I, because I sit heavier on this side, yeah, that was right. <laughs> 
because I sit heavier on this side. No, <laughs> I'm confusing myself. <laughs> oh wait, did somebody say something? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that was just a little message. So, okay. Because I sit heavier on this side, when I go to lift it up, this is kind of my, the side that makes me the most stable. So if I take that away from myself, it makes me want to fall. Does that make sense? So because I sit heavier on this side, when I lift this leg up, my weight is already shifted this way. So when I lift it up, that's easier. So again, when you do it, when you try it for yourself, you're not really trying to stop it. You're not trying to use your core. You just kind of want to see which side feels easier to you. So it's kind of like when, when you do um, the tree pose, whenever you get ready to do the tree pose, if you're standing here with energy going down both legs, if you pick up one side, <laughs> you're gonna fall, right? If I pick up one side, I'm gonna fall. So in order to get good balance, you want to shift that energy over, then pick up your leg. Shift the energy over to the side you're gonna stand on, then pick up your leg, right? So with the ball here, what it's showing is this, this side is easier for me. So when I lift up this leg, it's because my energy is already shifted over this way more so. So when I lift up this leg, that's easier. My energy isn't shifted to this side, it's on this side. So when I pick this side up, it's gonna make me fall. So what we're gonna do Next is, um, brought some dumbbells. So you can actually do some exercises with this. Um, but first, after you've determined which side is your harder side, we want to, um, we want to work on strengthening, strengthening that. Hi, how are you? <laughs> we want to um, help to try to even it out. So when you ride, you can kind of be aware of that and do that in the saddle. So first thing you want to do, we're not going to do the weights yet. Um, so. I'm going to kind of shift my weight just a little bit to the right, knowing that I'm not sitting equal. And I'm just gonna practice and feel what that feels like. I'm gonna just feel what that feels like in my body when I have my weight shifted over this way a little bit more. So it really starts to get you in touch with your, your seat bones. Like right now, automatically my weight wants to go this way, but I'm gonna shift it this way. I'm gonna try to make it feel balanced between both seat bones, both glutes. Now I'm purposely going to shift it this way just a little bit and then lift it up. Right. I'm going to purposely let it shift back and I'm going to lift up this side. Be aware of what your core does, what your seat bones feel like, what your glutes feel like. Okay. When you get the feel of like what it feels like to have each leg up, come back to the center. It really makes you aware of like how you're sitting when you're just trying to sit balanced. <laughs> yes, keep time for me today. <laughs> Yesterday we went two hours. <laughs> 
So we're gonna try to keep this about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> so just by practicing this, shifting, lifting your leg up. So again, this is my harder leg to lift up. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it because it's like, yeah, making my energy go straight. <laughs> I'm going to put it down. I'm going to, and I'm showing you, I'm going to shift. I'm trying to focus on making both sides equal. Did you see that? My weight automatically wants to kind of go that way. So I'm kind of using my, my core right here to feel the balance between the two. You know, this is just kind of like whenever you work out your muscles, you're going to have one side that's stronger than the other. And um, usually if you're right-handed, your right side's going to be stronger. It's going to be your more dominant side. Um, and it's then just learning how to um, make each side more balanced. I, I learned a long time ago for my biceps, my right one was always bigger than my left one. And I learned a long time ago the reason this one would always burn and give out before this one. And I thought that's weird because this is my supposed to be stronger dominant side. But the reason was because this side was cheating to keep up with this side. So when I would do a bar curl or not a bar curl, your stronger side can take over on with a bar curl. But I used to use dumbbells um, and watch because you're using a weight in each arm separately and I could keep my elbow in close to my body on the right side because it was stronger but my left side my elbow would lift and it's like that made me bring in my shoulder to help to keep up with this one so once I learned that this elbow was lifting then I really made it stay in and then that made this arm grow more. So it's kind of like this too. You're going to have one side that's easier that you sit on a little bit heavier and this. And while I'm talking right here, I'm really trying to be aware of like sitting even on both seat bones. So, um, so next what we can do is we can add some exercises to that while you're holding one leg up. This is going to really work your core a little bit more because you have some weight added to it. So um, I'm going to do my harder side first. So I'm going to shift to the right. I don't know if you can see that. Shift to the right. You'll feel your right leg tense. I'm going to bring my arms up here. I'm going to raise this leg. And now I'm going to lift. So this will challenge your balance a little bit more. Adding the weights and then especially lifting over your head. This one is going to be harder than if you were to do curls because you can do you can do curls. If you re really want a challenge, you can come out here. So in order to stabilize yourself, so I'm still this way, I'm going to shift back to the center. In or order to stabilize yourself, you'll feel your, your core tighten. So like your lower, lower abs, maybe your upper a little bit. See, I don't know if you know that I just, I felt that shift this way. So just practicing this, you're going to start to really notice when you're sitting square and balanced and when your weight shifts, because this gets you in touch more with your core. And I think it's, it's not like 
um, your core, like when you do crunches, it's like um, your transverse abdominals, which is the layer of, of abs that are closest to your spine. So it's, it's a deeper, a deeper set of um, abdominals, a deeper core, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so I'm practicing balancing. This will just really make you more aware <laughs> of your, your balance. This is Star. This is my Mustang quarter horse. <laughs> she came over to supervise. This is my personal trainer. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to the other side now. So first I'm going to shift to the left. I'm gonna bring my hands up. <laughs> Make sure I don't hit my little horsey. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my my right leg up and then I'm gonna press. <laughs> She's kind of throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> do you want to do it? You want to turn? <laughs> okay. Let me do curls. I'll do curls. So shift leg up. I just don't want to like hit her. <laughs> you don't want to hit her little face. This side is like getting harder for me now. Maybe I'm getting more, more even. I don't want to hit her. So you can challenge yourself too by doing each side because this will throw you off. See, <laughs> that'll throw you off a little bit. Since she's here, I'm just going to sit here and balance, feel even. Again, you don't want your feet up against the ball because that makes it really easy. You want it, your feet away from the ball. And actually, while she's here, I'm going to show you another balance, another balance exercise. Thank you for the thumbs up. And um, if you guys don't have a ball, I posted on the community tab um, a link where you can get one through Amazon, or you can um, just go to Walmart. If you, um, if you live near a Walmart, they have them too. I, th I got this off of Amazon. I'm an Amazon shopper. <laughs> I like Amazon because I don't have to go anywhere and usually you get everything in one to two days. <laughs> um, so I got this off of Amazon too. I didn't post this because I wasn't sure if I was going to bring this out, but this is just a, a, I think they're called a wobble board. I call them balance boards, but um, they look like little flying saucers, <laughs> right? So I got this off of Amazon. So this is another good one just to practice your balance. And um, I'm gonna grab this. If your balance isn't very good at all, you might not wanna start with this. You might wanna just start with the tree poses that we were doing earlier. Um, so you would shift to one side, pick your leg up. If your balance isn't really good, just kind of pick it up this way. If your balance is a little bit better and you need more of a challenge, you can turn it sideways because bringing that knee out, it changes the balance of things. When you just bring it straight up, it's a little bit easier. But when you move this, this is moving away from your body. That's going to make it a little bit harder. So here, usually looking down is the easiest. As you start to bring your eyes up and even up, and your hands up, it makes it harder. Um, so left side, always shift your weight over first, because if you have two sticks, you know, your two legs are coming down, you're balanced on 50% here and 50% here, hopefully. <laughs> 
and if you pick up one of the 50 percent <laughs> you're gonna fall right so you need to make it 100 percent so you're shifting all of your weight over it makes a direct line right then you can lift your foot up <laughs> right so practicing on the ground first before moving to your balance board and on these I'm not as good um, or this side I should say this side there we go okay Um, another thing that you can do on the ground before you move to the balance board is you can do a shift over. And I think standing actually is almost opposite for me on the ball because all the years that I've trained people, I've stood like this. And I think that's part of why my spine is crooked. Um, cause it's, it's made my my spine crooked so you can see how it makes this hip where it would sit heavier. Um, this shoulder usually is higher also from all the years carrying, carrying my gym bag on my shoulder. Um, so I decided a little earlier that I need to start standing like this for the next half of my life and carry a gym bag on this side. <laughs> um, so this side is more comfortable for me to do the tree pose and stuff like that. This side is harder. On the ball, it's the opposite. Um, so, so what I was going to show you was you can practice the just picking up. You can practice the tree pose. You can also practice um, where you move your leg front, sideways, and back. So you pick it up. You can move it front, sideways back, front, sideways, back. Front, sideways, back. Front, sideways, back. I'm gonna show you from the side too because when you go to the back, you wanna make sure you're not going forward, right? So front, sideways, back. So you're trying to keep this as straight as you can. Front, sideways, back. Front, sideways, back. Front, sideways, back. Hi, how are you? Good to see everybody here. We have five people, five people, yay. <laughs> and I can't tell if, if you can see, I know you can see my, I, well, I think you can see my feet. That's the most important. I don't know if you can see my full body in this, but that's okay. Um, as long as you can kind of see most of my, my body and my lower legs. Um, so <laughs> then if you can do all those and those feel pretty comfortable, this would be the next, um, the next progression, I guess you could say, for, for balance. To me, I think this is probably the hardest out of all of them. Um, they all have their own challenges, but um, the surface that you put this on will make a difference too. I'm on like a rubber mat, so that's not going to be as hard as like if you had like a hard floor. A hard floor is going to be harder than something like a, a rubber mat and then carpet. If you put it on carpet, it's going to make it easier. And then if you had carpet and like a yoga mat or something like that, that would make it even easier. So you want to start with um, two feet. So can you guys, you guys can see the balance board, right? You can see my feet in the balance board. I hope, I think you can. I can't see that far and it's kind of, it's the 
picture is not real bright, so it's kind of hard for me to see, but I think I can see maybe the balance board. So when you stand on it, um, and so all of these things are, are grounding. They, they get you in touch with that first chakra, which is your grounding, your stability, your balance, right? And to me, it's like, when I have my clients do this, I can always tell, and I can usually feel it anyway before they step up here. I can usually tell if their balance is gonna be good or not good. <laughs> um, because I think there is a certain energy that goes along with being balanced and like um, being able to balance well. And all that has to go with, it goes for the first chakra is the balance and first chakra, you don't want to be too rigid and you don't want to be too flexible, right? It's kind of like a balance of the two. You need to be able to do both. And I'll show you an example, like right here, it should feel effortless when you're doing it. And I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> um, but what you want to do is like not try to stop it, you know, and, and like keep your, you don't want to try to keep your body locked in place. So you don't want your ankles locked. You don't want your your knees to be too rigid. You don't want to like hold your core in too tight, right? Because I just tightened my core. See how it kind of threw me off a little bit, right? It's about the flow. So you want to think of like breaking at the ankles and even the knees. So I'm going to show you. I don't know if you can see this, but sometimes when you feel like you're losing your balance if your knees or ankles or hips or anything else is like too stiff you're gonna fall you're gonna you're gonna lose your balance so i kind of think of like my ankles are loose if i need them to be loose because if i were to like fall you know start to fall i can catch myself if you don't let your knees float or your ankles float, you're gonna topple over. So another thing, practicing this, if you're doing good, if your balance is good, it usually means that your breath is flowing. It's what I've noticed, like if my clients have come to me and they're breathing off the top of their lungs, which we kind of talked about that yesterday. If you're breathing off the top of your lungs or chest, I guess, if you're breathing up here, shallow breathing up here, usually that makes you top, top heavy. And what happens if you're top heavy? <laughs> like if you have something that has like a big top and like a little tiny point, it's gonna fall over, right? It's not gonna be balanced. So that's what happens when you breathe shallow is you're going to start to get wobbly. It's going to be hard for you to, to be balanced. So doing this, practicing this, if your balance is good, pay attention to what your breath is doing. Pay attention to how your body feels. Like I'm not trying to flex anything. I'm just kind of going with the flow. So to me, going with the flow, kind of, you're coming up to your second chakra. So once you're like connected to the first chakra, the second chakra is kind of flow. It's going with the flow, right? So if you have a hard time going with the flow, get on your balance board. <laughs> It'll teach you, you know? And it's like, if I, like right now, it's like my body parts are like, loose if they need to be, but not so loose to where they're too flexible, right? If I tighten, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna tighten up my, see, just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm gonna tighten up my ankles and my knees and my hips. It's like, as soon as you tighten up, if your body starts to get off balance, if you don't let your ankles and knees and everything float, that's what makes you lose your balance. 
So this teaches you if you're somebody that like rides stiff, um, this will help you to kind of be able to flow with your horse a little bit more. It's good for just in general too, as far as like um, practicing your balance. Like if you're walking or running somewhere and you trip on something, you're gonna be able to catch yourself easier and easier and not fall. I have a lot of clients tell me that, that because we work on balance things, that um, if we hadn't done that, they would have fallen. They wouldn't have been able to catch themselves. Um, so how are we doing here? Oh, yay, thank you for the thumbs up. Um, do I start live? Yeah, we're, um, I'm doing live stream every day in August. So, and it'll probably be somewhere around this time, um, anywhere between 2.30 and probably 4.30ish is when I might start Pacific Standard Time. So that's, um, yay. <laughs> um, that's the, the Lita challenge and that's live every day in August. So I'm really going to try to do that live every day. Yesterday was a two hour one. So I need to learn to cut my time a little shorter. So we're at 31 minutes now. So that's not too bad. We might go another 10 minutes or so. Um, so progression from the two feet on the, on the balance board. Um, this is a one pound dumbbell. So this will be a little more challenging. And the reason why is because you're gonna bring just the one pound off to one side. So you're gonna hold it up, you're gonna bring it to the side and then to the other side. I call this the dumbbell pass. Right, so when this is on this side, it makes certain muscles flex on one side of my body to keep my balance. And then when I switch it to this side, it makes other ones flex. So it's almost like one has to flex and the other has to give a little bit more while you're keeping your balance. Does that make sense? So I'll try to tell you what I'm feeling. So I felt this side tighten more and I kind of feel my left leg tighten, my right leg kind of, I want to say, loosen a little bit. So then it's kind of the opposite on this side. I think that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> Right? So if you're not inside your body, you're not grounded, even though it's one pound, that could be enough to like throw you off to the side. Right? So that's another one that I like to do for balance. And this is the, well, it's not the hardest. I do have one other thing that's harder after this one, but I didn't bring it with me. So um, you're gonna try to put your foot center left to right. And then, yeah, kind of the arch of your foot kind of goes like the middle of the circle, front to back. So um, you're gonna shift Shift to one side. Am I still on? Oh, my phone's getting dark again. I hope it's not overheating. Okay, this will be the last exercise. Um, so this is basically just like doing like what we did on the floor, but this just makes it a little harder doing it on the on the balance board or the wobble board. So you're gonna shift over. So I, I kind of go up to my toe on this foot so I can keep this leg straight. And I just shift my weight over. I make my toe real light on the side. 
I get in touch with my core. And then when you feel good, you can lift that leg up. Right, you can do tree pose. You can do the front, side, back. And the hardest, the hardest thing is like when you put a, a loopy band around your ankles and you do it, because that extra tension makes it where you kind of have to explode a little bit more, which kind of throws your balance off a little bit. So it's makes your um, makes it more challenging to keep your balance. And so again, standing here with both feet flat, this knee is bent. So you want to step over to here. So you kind of have to put your toe, your tiptoe, to shift the weight here. You can do a slight bend in, in your knee if you want to. Straighter is going to be harder. Um, slight bend makes it just a little bit easier. Right, so you're shifting, then you kind of test it. You make your toe light, then you lift it up. Right, then you can go tree pose. And then you can do the front, side, and back. Okay, guys. It's 36 minutes. Um, okay, let me just move this up just a little bit. Does anybody have any, any questions? Any questions on any of it? So, okay. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning in and being here. And I hope you guys try these exercises. If you do, um, come back to this video. It's, I'm, I'm gonna just change the title to live replay and um, it'll still be on here. So if you do try them, you can always come back. Thank you for the thumbs up. Um, you can always come back and rewatch if you forget. Um, and you can do it along with me Oh, hi. I was just getting ready to hang up. <laughs> hi. Um, yeah, the, the live from yesterday, two hours, it took a while to um, process. I think that's what you call it. So, but I think if you got the notification in the, in, in your um, feed that you can go to it any, you can go to it any time and um, watch it. So yeah, the longer the video is, the longer it takes it to, to process. So you should be able to just go to your notifications and watch it right away, I think. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to get on here and show you the exercises. And again, if you watch this for the replay and you do it along with me, comment below and let me know what you thought, what you felt, and if you liked it. And um, upper body tomorrow. Um, yeah, does anybody else want to see some? Okay, yay, thank you, Susan. Does anybody else want to see some upper body stuff? Tomorrow, upper body. This is good. This will make me work out. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so let's let's maybe think of like shoulders and arms. I kind of need to work on my shoulders and arms because lifting the saddle up, I hold my saddle and it's almost like I do kind of like a curl and a press and then I walk over to my horse and I set it on top of my horse. So that would be good. I could stand to do a shoulder and an arm workout. Does that sound good to you guys? I hope. <laughs> I know there's like a delay usually. Okay, good. Yay. 
and we just got another person on too. Um, <laughs> yeah, usually when I'm getting ready to hang up, then a couple more people come on and stuff, then I hate to hang up because it's like, oh, you missed it. <laughs> We're just getting ready to hang up. Um, all right, I'll think of something really good for shoulders and arms. I brought my gym boss timer out here just in case I wanted to use it, but we didn't use it today. But I think I want to come up with a workout to um, use the gym boss timer. And, oh shoot, you know what? Okay, good. Um, I, I know they're so handy. I use it with my clients all the time. And, um, um, what I was going to say too, is like, I wanted to maybe do a tuning fork Tuesday because tomorrow's Tuesday. I wanted to do tuning fork Tuesday and maybe run through the tuning forks for the chakras. Um, but we can do an upper body or you guys can vote if you want to do tuning forks tomorrow and weights on Wednesday, <laughs> upper body on Wednesday. Um, or depending on the time, I would say we would do both, but I know what will happen. I'll have another two hour video, <laughs> another two hour live if I do both. <laughs> so I'll let you guys, oh, okay. Weights on Wednesday. Um, is that good with, um, I think it was Maria. It's kind of hard to read my screen. I think it was Maria. Is that good for you, tuning forks tomorrow and weights on Wednesday? I'll wait a little bit. There's like, usually like a, a 10 second or so delay. Okay. Yeah, Maria, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, did I bring an, so I'll give you a little sample. I have my chakra tuning forks and great, I didn't bring a mallet. <laughs> Hold on a second, I might be able to um, Oh, wait, I should do over here. I forgot I have my mic on. <laughs> so this is um, first chakra. Second chakra, sacral. My horses love these when I do them. I'll go usually stand over by their pens and I actually used these on Saturday. I think it was Saturday. Um, one of my horses had a little bit of mild case of colic and, um, I used some of the tuning forks on him and, um, yeah, I think they helped. Can you guys hear these? Let me try, um. Let me try something that's a little bit harder. I don't know how well you can hear these on. When I do my, um, oh, okay, good. When I do my Skype or Facebook Messenger um, fitness clients, sometimes they'll want the tuning forks, but I usually do it, I don't use a mic, so. Is that better or is that too loud?
you felt that? <laughs> was it the sound or was it the, because I'm kind of stirring stuff up a little bit for your second chakra. Both, yeah. <laughs> it's the thing with like tuning forks or energy work or anything. Um, sound and vibration, yeah. Um, is it's the intention, the the energy and the intention. Okay, so do you like it with the horse brush better? Or with with a with a mallet? Which sounds best to you guys? Okay. Yeah, do you feel it feel it more? If to me it feels feels better. The other almost feels a little muted and I'm not sure what it feels like through the mic. That's why I wanted to ask you guys so I'll know what to use tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so does that sound good then? We'll plan on tuning forks tomorrow. Tuning fork Tuesday for Lita. <laughs> and then we'll do weights on Wednesday for shoulders and arms. Okay. Yeah, so just be prepared to just kind of be able to sit in a comfortable place or even lay down. And I'll go through and I'll work, I'll go through all the chakras. And you can also um, go out with your horses and just sit next to your horse. If you have a horse, sit next to your horse and um, have your phone or tablet or whatever you have um, and sit next to your horse and see what your horse does. Mine love it and it's like funny going through each one. Um, if I stand, um, if I stand over in the corner, I can usually be by three of them over here or I can stand over this way and be by two or three of them. And it's funny they'll come up to the ones that they want to hear and that they like and that they need and then they'll walk away from the others and each one of them's kind of different chancy kind of tends to like um he kind of likes all of them but he seems like he really likes the um yes dogs and cats too so if for, so tomorrow you can sit next to your dogs or cats or yeah a any animal, all animals, they, they love this. Um, and like I said, they, they, um, they know what they need and what they like, and they'll walk away from, they'll walk away from the, the tones that, no, I don't really need that one. And I did it one time and I can't remember now cause it's been a few months. It was like, I don't know, last year sometime, I think like winter time, November or so. So I don't remember the details, but I just remember like going through them. I was standing over here in this corner over here and started with um, the root chakra and all three of them stood there. So Mousy, Chansey and Romeo, they stood there. They liked that one and they'll usually stand there like they're over there now. They're just standing in the corner over there and they have their leg cocked and they'll stand there. Sometimes they'll look and chew um, and I forget which one, if it was like maybe the, the third chakra or something, one of them walked away. And then when I got to the next one, they heard that and then they came back. And then I think Romeo walked away from like a higher toned one. I can't remember if it was the, um, third eye chakra or something. Chansey really liked that one. Mousy walked away maybe on this one I'm not sure but they kind of like 
walked away on different ones. So each one of them liked, you know, certain ones. And I remember one time doing energy work on, on my appy. They'll do that. They'll adjust. So you don't ever have to worry about like, you know, if they're, if you're doing too much or whatever, because they tell you. And I was doing some on him and he liked it for a little bit. And then I'll, and I had him tied up. And it, at one point he moved away from it. And so I just stopped and he kind of licked and chewed. And then I just waited and a couple minutes later or so, he moved his body back over to me and I put my hands back up and we did some more. So they know how to adjust. They know what they need and what they don't need. So I just thought that was interesting. So anyway, so tomorrow we'll be tuning for Tuesday with the brush and we'll go through all the chakras and um, I might bring out a couple other ones too. I'll just bring out what I think I am feeling um, because I do have some organ tuning forks too. I have a bunch of tuning forks. <laughs> um, I have different sets of chakra ones and um, I have organ forks. So I have um, the liver, kidney, lungs, spleen, and blood for circulation. So, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but I just found this out probably a month ago or so, and I thought it was very interesting that um, each organ has an emotion that's attached to it too. So um, liver, the emotion is anger. You know, so sometimes if you're feeling more angry or irritable, you know, it could be that your liver needs tuning. Um, kidney is fear. You know, I think that's an important one with what's going on with the world today is there's a lot of fear being put out there and that affects the kidney. Um, the lungs is um, kind of like grief and joy. If you don't have a lot of joy, the, the lung one will feel good and sound good to your ears. And then there's the spleen is related to worry. So if you're worrying a lot, that kind of tunes your spleen so you feel better. So tuning forks work by entrainment. So um, these are chakra ones, but the, the organ ones, they were developed by, um, I forget the lady's name. It's, um, I think it's Barbara. Um, but she tested and got frequencies of healthy, um, and there's more organ forks than I have. I only have those, those five, but, um, she tested like a healthy heart, a healthy liver, a healthy kidney, and got the frequency of what a healthy, each one of the organs were. And that's what the tone of the tuning forks is. So entrainment is when, um, and it's not just with tuning forks, it's with a lot of things. Um, entrainment is when one thing resonates. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> one thing resonates with another and it's the, the stronger vibration is going to um, kind of take over. So, you know, if you, if you surround yourself with positive people, you're going to entrain with that. If you surround yourself with a lot of negative people, sometimes it's hard not to start to get negative. Um, you know, that's why I, I think it's important for us to work on ourselves with, for our horses too, because, you know, I think when you're aware of your body and you're balanced and centered and feeling good, they're going to want to be with you more. And sometimes when you have an off day, then sometimes they help us. So, you know, I think it's important, but you know, the tuning forks for if somebody has a, um, say they have like a, a bad liver, you know, and, and the liver helps to get rid of toxins too. 
and tuning forks too. That's another thing. Um, do any, any of you guys have, um, you don't wanna do them if you have a pacemaker. Does anybody have a pacemaker here? Or if you have cancer, cause they do kind of create a detox effect too. So if anybody has like a pacemaker or cancer, um, that can be kind of pacemaker. It could throw the pacemaker off. So we don't want to do anybody with a pacemaker and, um, uh, okay, good. <laughs> I didn't think so. I, I figured you guys were okay, but I figured I, ha I needed to say that too. So I'll, I'll say it again tomorrow, but, um, you do kind of get sometimes a little bit of a detox effect from it too. So, um, but a, somebody that has say problems with the liver, the, and this isn't a liver one, but just pretend like it's a liver one, the tone, your body will sense and feel that frequency of the healthy liver and it starts, it'll start to entrain to the frequency of a healthy liver. So that's how it works. And it's, it's not something that just happens overnight. I guess it could, you know, miracles. <laughs> yeah, this is the root chakra. Um, miracles do happen, but it's something that, um, yeah. Like if you really feel it, it's just like, oh, that feels really good. This is the root chakra again. So this is the grounding. This is kind of what we talked about today. This is the um, grounding balance because you get, you get balance when you're grounded. If you're living in your head, you're more than likely not balanced. You're gonna be top heavy. You're not gonna have balance. So this was, would be a really good one for somebody that like lives in their head, but it, it could also feel uncomfortable for somebody that lives in their head because it's, it's a different f frequency. This is, um, so this is actually a shock reset and it's um, 194.18 Hertz. So um, let me just do this real quick. Since I have these out here, <laughs> Okay, so this is first, second, third chakra. So these are your lower three chakras below the center chakra, which is the heart chakra. And let's, let's see if little Star Star likes them. Do you like these? See her lick and chew. A lick and chew is good. It's kind of like, a, I see it as like a clearing or a resetting. Oops, that one's. I like the first one. <laughs> the first one is feeling really good to me. She, she kind of tends to, if I remember right, she kind of tends to like the the root chakra and like the lower frequencies more so. I need to respray her.
you put fly spray on your nose, huh? Okay, um, just so you can hear a different one. That's the crown chakra. Okay, <laughs> we're at one hour. <laughs> so what do you guys think? You like the tuning forks? You ready for a tuning fork Tuesday? tomorrow. I'll bring some different ones out. Oh good, yay. <laughs> um, I'll bring some different ones out if you guys have any suggestions of what you might want to hear. Um, you can comment now or if you're watching this in the replay. Um, here's one of my kitty cats. <laughs> Look out. This is T-Rex. <laughs> Come here. You got to see his face. He has such a cute little face. Look up. <laughs> That's T Rex. <laughs> um, yeah, you can comment now or after on the live replay. Um, I have different chakra tuning forks, and um, I have the organ tuning forks, and um, what else do I have? I have the um, <laughs> I have the brain wavelength tuning forks too, which I might bring the alpha one out here because I think the alpha brain wave is um, is a good one to get used to because I think horses kind of connect on that one. That's like the brain wavelength to where you know when you're um, kind of waking up. So you're not really all the way awake and you start to kind of wake up a little bit. For me, that's like um, once I get up in the morning, if I'm not, you know, I'm not really in my head and thinking, it's like it's kind of where my intuition kind of and I get like really good insights is in that. And it's kind of where telepathy happens. And I think I experience that when I ride too. sometimes when you're relaxed you're centered and everything's just flowing, you get into that alpha brain wavelength and it's almost like you can think what you want to do and your horse does it. Um, it's like subtle. It almost seems like magic, but I know in a sense, you know, when you're thinking of something, your body, I think, adjusts to what you're thinking. So I have to be careful, like if I'm jogging to like not think, walk or, you know, or, whoa, I'm going to woe him up there. Or if I think, if I'm thinking, whoa, my body adjusts and he stops. So, yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. So I might bring that one too. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you guys liked. <laughs> Don't put your butt in the camera. <laughs> um I hope you guys liked today's video. So it was on balancing and grounding and a sample of tuning forks. So we'll continue the tuning forks tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a great evening. And um, yay. <laughs> um, hope you have a great evening and or afternoon wherever you live. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I think that's, I think that's all. Thank you for the thumbs up. And I'll see you guys tomorrow somewhere between 2.30 um, and 4.30-ish Pacific Standard Time is when I'll start. Today I started at 3.30-ish, I think it was. So it'll be somewhere right around here. But I posted on the community tab before I came on here just to kind of give you guys a head up, heads up. Um, and I'll do that tomorrow too. Like once my day starts, as it gets closer, I'll know a little bit more of like when I'm going to be able to come on. So look in the community, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> look in the community tab to get a better idea of like when I'm going to start. And it might be a little bit after whatever time I post, because sometimes I do run late, but it's going to be somewhere close to that time.
Okay, just so you guys know. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.